Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to Stats and Stilettos. If you love sports, then you'll love Stats and Stilettos. Here in Chicago, has the pass is picked up by Jennings, and Jennings takes it all the way for a Bears touchdown. Cutler, inside, Davis, touchdown. From 41 yards away, this is for the win. Robbie Gold's kick is good. And a tough, tough loss for the Carolina Panthers. Controlled this game for three of the four quarters. But hats off to the Chicago Bears and their offense. Their offense with two great drives in the fourth quarter. We uh, we, we, we talk always about playing 60 minutes, you know, two halves to a game. You know, all that coach uh, talk, but uh, really did come down to that today. Most of the time in the league, it's going to come down, no matter what happens early on, what do you do in the fourth quarter? What do you do with two minutes left to go uh, in the game? And for Jay, getting us in position. Robbie Gold won't miss a lot of field goals, and that's why it was important for us to get him back in position. He's, I've, seen, I've been on the sideline a lot of times where he's kicked the winning field goal. Talk with Chicago, 1690 WVON, Stats and Stilettos. What's going on, everybody? I'm Fruit Basir. I am Ty Eileen. I am Maya Kai. And tonight we have a lot of stuff going on in studio, on the phone. A little bit of everything for everybody. Coming up at 920, we will have Anita Bennett in studio from Anita on the B-side. She'll be in to tell us all about that, give us a bunch of different behind-the-scenes type of stuff about Athletes, celebrities, different things of that nature. So we'll bring her in at 920 to do that with us. At 10 o'clock, we will have Kyle Inman from Griffin Sport, GriffinSportsNews.com, and he's the sports editor of that, and he'll be breaking down the NBA with us. At 1020, we'll have Mia Jackson from uh, SidelinePass.com to uh, talk a little MLB and World Series with us. And right now in the sixth inning, it looks like uh, the Giants are getting one step closer to – Finishing Wrapping this thing. They're up, up three to two here with um Big Prince Fielder popping up to second base right now, the bottom of the sixth inning. And we'll also have our tip of the week at um in the ten forty segment here. The phone number to the station is seven seven three five nine one sixteen ninety. That's seven seven three five nine one sixteen ninety. Give us a buzz. You know, let us know what you think about the show. You can uh, follow the show on Twitter as well at Stat Stilettos. Oops. Left me hanging. Man, we got some it's coordination okay. I, I left you hanging a couple weeks ago, <laughs> so it's so only natural. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can also listen online at WVON.com and like our Facebook page as well. Now, those highlights we heard on to start the show were courtesy of Fox Sports and the Bears pulling victory from the jaws of defeat right there with that um, 23-22 win. And again, Lovey Smith says the most ridiculous things in the press conference after the game. Coach speak that you play a full, you know, two halves of the game. You know something? I wish someone would coach him on what's the appropriate things to say because he was looking real tight-lipped for about three quarters of that game. And I just, there was a lot wrong with that game. I'm serious. And last week on Monday when they played Detroit, same type of issues got carried over into Sunday. You know, thank God for the likes of the defense and Tim Jennings, who, who was a difference maker in that game. But the sad part about that was got a, you know, an interception and then didn't get anything out of it because now the offense seems to be very stalled. We've watched this for two games in a row that they're not producing. Look at this key stat. In the fourth quarter, the Bears actually completed their first third down of the game. In the fourth quarter, the Panthers finally had their first three and out of the game. What's wrong with those two stats? Well, that's a uh, bad thing to say on the defense's end as well when you're um, getting your first three and out in the fourth quarter. Today, I think today was more of a team suck effort. It, it, it was, wasn't, yeah. it, The defense well, didn't have a great game at all. A lot of people wanted to point fingers at Jay Cutler, and I just, you know, it, it – I'm absolutely not Jay Cutler's biggest fan. I've n- it's never been a secret. When he first came to the Bears, I was very against it. He made a lot of mistakes. However, today was not the day to point fingers at Jay Cutler. Today wasn't the day. There well, were so many other issues there was. On, all, on both sides of the ball. And unfortunately, the offensive line, who we all know is bandaged up and it's going to be this way forever until they develop the players, got beat at the line of scrimmage by the four, four of the Panthers the entire game. Six sacks within the first quarter. Three turnovers in the first quarter, first half of the game, rather. That's extremely unacceptable. I think, 
I, I can't put all of those sacks on the line though. I think a lot of that. Uh, was did you Cutler did you watch? No, 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 no. Did you watch the game? Yes. If you get, if you from yeah. start to finish, and I but, think I think it was 70-30 Cutler. I'm going to go with those sacks because some of those yeah were the line. seventy offensive lines fault, 30, 30 Cutler's fault. Like what, what's the no, break? No, seventy thing? thirty Cutler, Cutler's fault. No. Cutler was holding that ball a little too long, a lot too long today, in my opinion. I think because. It was some of those plays he could have just thrown it away maybe. But at the same time, I'll say this as well. Maybe last year or the year before that, Cutler would have hurried up and thrown an interception in some of those points. Right. So which color do you sacks. prefer? I prefer today. Thank you. I don't have anything That's bad to I'm say saying. about Cutler. I prefer today. He I love Jay Cutler today. He's improved. <laughs> His decision-making improved. It, you because know, he would have thrown those balls away, no part doubt. Part of the issue and we've been talking about this since the beginning of the season, is to have so many offensive weapons, but the inability to truly be able to spread the field with the weapons. Finally, somebody remembered that Earl Bennett was on the team, yeah. and he was able to slash and get that middle-of-the-field type yardage. Um, yes, you do have to establish the run game. Yes, Forte should be in the mix, so that shouldn't be surprising. But th the fact that they don't know how to distribute the ball appropriately, when they finally threw it to the tight end, Matt Spath, he was surprised and then dropped the ball. <laughs> he was like, oh. I was supposed to catch that? I'm not blocking somebody? I mean, so they have to get better about understanding you have this wealth of talent on offense. Use it appropriately to truly spread the field. Like, why can't you have two back sets? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be angry about this until the season's over. Why are you not putting Bush and Forte on the field at the same time? There's so many options that they have. That could truly help the O-line. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were, you know, trying to defend the pass rush a little too much. And here's the thing. P the Panthers didn't even blitz that much. They were just getting spun around like it was a country hoedown. And it was ridiculous how they performed. How much do you get spun around at a country hoedown? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Grab your partner, do -si do <laughs> But it's just, it's a little concerning because when you're struggling against a team that won one game yeah. this season, I'm concerned. And once again, Steve Smith, Steve Smith has the Bears defense's number. Yeah. Remember that year where Dylan Levy Smith is, we don't plan for one player, and he just ate them up? But he's been doing that every yeah, time he, they play so the You Bears, can accept Steve that. Smith. Steve Smith is going to eat you up. But yeah. here's the thing, too. But they were also able to establish the run game, which is something that they really had not done. The Panthers had not gone – they had only gone to the run game 20 times up into coming into this game with the Bears. Mm -hmm. That was it. 20 run plays. That's it. That's, that's not a lot. They, so they weren't committed. But today against the Bears – for some reason, they felt that's something they could be successful with. I was kind of debating, like, what way I wanted to go with this conversation as far as, uh, like, sitting here, even, even though the Bears won, complaining about everything they did wrong, or sitting here, the Bears won, praising the things they were able to get done and saying, well, you know, 6-1 in the NFL, a win is a win. You know what I mean? So I think I'm, I'm going with B on this one. I'd, rather, I'd much rather, because you don't have enough games to say, well, this is an ugly win or, well, you Yes, know. you do. You're midway through the season. You do have enough games to look at this and not, say, not in yes, a you do. Game schedule. You, you do. Not you're you're, you're halfway schedule. through your 16-game schedule. So at the midway point, if you can't sit there and say, there's some benchmark things that we can look at that we need to improve upon, when exactly do you plan on doing it? Game 16? But with a 16-game schedule, you take it how you can get it. Okay. You say, that's, a you that's, rather, that, that's a man. That's a man talking. Take it how have, you can get it. You much rather Bands have, will make her dance. Whatever. Take it how you can get it. You'd much rather have a just, win, a, no. a so-called ugly okay, win. Okay, but then right? you know what? Then. You just do. You, you take it, and you say exactly what I said on Twitter after the game was over. I was like, you know, Bears gave me a heart attack. <laughs> Thank God they won. However, don't play that damn song. <laughs> <laughs> the victory song that they play at the end of the game. Just turn that off. Because you don't deserve to play that song right now because you was, barely won this game. That's so what let's I'm just about. be excited we won the game. But let's go to the locker room and figure out why we barely won the game against a team that came in one in five. Just I mean, what, was this part of Cam Newton's suggestion box? Maybe that's what happened. He, there were some <laughs> suggestions in the suggestion box. They came out against the Bears. They played a different game. They almost won. Thank God Robbie Gold is golden. <laughs> here you go. If, if you need some positives, here are some positives. Robbie Gold was Robbie Gold. <laughs> he helped. He helped to win the game. Two. Hey, another pick six. Six pick sixes in seven games. Okay. So there's there's two positives. And, but the Bears were actually minus one with the turnover. But I'm just one, saying. I'm just saying. You day, you you need to. For them. You were looking for some balance. So here yeah. here's the balance. Um. Hey, they they got another pick six. So the defense is very much integrated and in, in helping to score. Um, Robbie Gold was was consistent, and he he helped them to win the game. And okay. he helped them to win actually by missing that first field goal that he missed. Because if he doesn't miss that field goal, we don't get that six yard punt. Or when they go for two, and don't get it, 
Dude, just take the one. Just take the one extra point. <laughs> Kick the field goal and stop well, trying to be extra special. But it was rather well, entertaining. But they would, they it was rather up three, entertaining they to up watch three. the guy run to the and he went stop. He celebrated and he right. yelled. <laughs> like, do you realize <laughs> no one's chasing you? There's a reason well, why Cutler no one's was chasing, chasing you. I'm like Cutler, stop. You know that this. But he right wasn't now, really. Right. He was running, but then halfway <laughs> right. through, he figured out. Wait a minute. That's where he he was having his chariots of fire run. Because that's how we got hurt last year, though. Chasing that is, interception yeah, against that San is, Diego. That is so true. So let it go. Just stop. You know, it is here it is. It is what it is. At the end of the day, this kind of play is not gonna stack up well against Green Bay. Heck, for what it's worth, this kind of play will not stack up well against the Tennessee Seahawks. Next week. That's and that's play. a frightening thought to say that if you play like this against the Seahawks, here's the thing for the mistakes that they made against a good team, they would have got blown out. Because they were playing a subpar team with a quarterback that's really struggling to figure out what he's supposed to be doing, they did not monopolize on the mistakes that the Bears made. But against a good team, like you saw the Giants-Cowboys game, and within that first quarter, the, the first three possessions, um, two turnovers by Romo, and of course, Eli Manning, first time, you know, three points, second time, seven points. So good quarterbacks, good teams will monopolize on your mistakes. That's, the score today was so lopsided because really, if the Panthers had played good football, they should have had like 40-something points. All right, I'm going to take this angle then. We say that they won't. You going to try something else? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to say this. They, uh, they would have played better against a good team, I think, because, I, well, they, had, because well. they didn't have the focus that they needed for a team as bad as Carolina. Carolina's awful. The Bears had a short week because of the Monday night game. I don't think they were all the way there into it mentally. And, and that happens okay. in, in so all forms of life, you, but it definitely are happens. Are you saying that they didn't bring their A game because they were playing a team that was that's one horrible. They were playing the C squad. Well, yeah. that's not – that's not, I'm not wh- saying it's a good game, that? but – I'm you saying they wouldn't have played that in way honor, against, against In honor game. of Herm Edwards, you play to, to win. win the game. But I, I'm, I said that to say <laughs> that they wouldn't have played that way against a good team because they would have had the focus, i.e. a better I, game. I, I'm going to be what? focused every I game. I don't care if the team comes in and <laughs> hasn't won one you. game. <laughs> because Lovey Smith is the kind of coach who will admit openly to the media that they were not prepared. Mm-hmm. So they had two games pretty much in a week span. They probably really weren't prepared because they had to come up with two game plans for two different teams. They didn't play Detroit well either. So when it's all said and done, the sloppy play continued into today. And they need to straighten that up because when they start playing better teams, you can say they're going to play up to the competition. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Uh, callers, what's your thoughts? Sub seven three five nine one sixteen ninety. Well, you know Hit us say. up at Twitter at Stat Stilettos as well. You know, I just. I know we shouldn't complain because, like you said, a win is a win is a win. But still, when you keep seeing the same type of mistakes, it's like you're not getting better. It's like teams that are undisciplined like the Lions. It's like, when is that going to stop happening week in and week out? See, I have reasoning for the Lions game as well. They had that long layoff. You know what I'm saying? It's a divisional game, Monday night game. They weren't going to come out and blow the Lions out in that game. I don't know what people were expecting from the Bears to do to the Detroit Lions, a team that knows them inside and out, that game was going to be close. I thought it would be a few more points scored, but, I mean. I will say a positive in this game that I would like to see more of. Um, obviously, you know, the Bears within the Tampa 2 do a lot of zone. Whenever they did the man-to-man matchups, they really had a lot of success with that. They, they, they forced them to do turnovers or to not be able to actually catch the ball. I'd like to see more man-to-man play. Um, that was very successful today against against the Panthers, and I think they need to kind of work that more. Is also doing audibles at the line as well. Mm-hmm. That those quick, let's just start, let's go. That that seems to have had some success, success too. So there are things that they they are doing that's working. Let's just keep doing more of it and scale back on the things that aren't working. And I think right now the biggest issue is really the offense. Is is them figuring out what do I do with all these pieces that I've never had before? We saw something today that we rarely see. The Bears in a two-minute offense to win a game and Jay Cutler leading them down the field. Mm-hmm. Like, when is the last time, if we have saw that at all for the Bears since he's been here? You know, that's been, like, the main criticism. One of – well, one of 50 million main criticisms of Jay Cutler, but one is that he's not clutch. He doesn't perform when the spotlight is at its brightest. Mm-hmm. Now, regardless, yeah, they're playing Carolina and he's awful, but the quarterback on the other side didn't come through when the game was on the line. Well, crybaby uh, Newton. But that you know. was <laughs> Fig Newton. Really? Yeah. Now yeah. he's got to be a crybaby Newton. <laughs> yes. Because he asked for a suggestion <laughs> box. He, he's has emo- <laughs> he has emotional issues. I he's think it's something wrong with him. Now, we were saying something about somebody having 
emotional issues. It was something wrong with him last ago. year. But you have to understand, he's in his soft. He's like in that sophomore season. Yeah. So he's last still year, a baby. He was he was the it boy last year. Now he's no longer the it boy. It's 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 RG three. It's Andrew Luck. The eyes are now turned somewhere else, and now his his play is truly being scrutinized. Is are you an NFL co- you know caliber QB? Not oh here's this phenomenal you know player that can run the ball and he you know he can make defenses scramble to figure out what he's going to do. No one's enamored by that anymore. It's like now we want to see you, you know, perform in the pocket. Can you throw the ball downfield? Can you complete passes? Can no, you be clutch? No, he can't do any of that. Well, you saw some of those overthrows he was making today. He was way off so on a lot of his So now he's today. being criticized. He went from being beloved to being criticized, and he's not doing well with it. The humbling of Cam Newton continues. All right, let's go around the league. I am DeMond Sproul, your moderator here for Around the League on Stats and Stilettos. Uh, we touched on the Chicago Bears game. Yes, they won 23-22 to 22 over Carolina. But let's talk about some other games. Let's talk about this one right here, which is very interesting. Detroit 28, Seattle 24. I actually thought Seattle was going to go in and get this victory. Matthew Stafford, 34 for 49, 352 yards, three touchdowns, one inception. Titus Young, big touchdown to win the game. with 100. He had two touchdowns with 100 yards. Russell Wilson, the little man. Uh, he did his thing, 25 for 35, 230 yards, two touchdowns, an interception. And Marshawn Lynch is just going crazy, 105 yards, one touchdown. Maya, I actually thought Seattle was going to come in and get an upset. If you want to say an upset over to Detroit, and Detroit just lost the game against the Bears this past Monday night. But I thought this was one they probably could have probably stole, but Detroit's still hanging around. You know, typical Detroit fashion of doing much better in the second half of the game. Even though they did score – touchdowns pretty much in first, second, and mm-hmm. the fourth quarter. What's really key about this game is you finally saw a Matt Stafford that you've been waiting to see all season long. Right. Now, if he's consistent like that, not just passing, he rushed in for a touchdown, you're getting that balance. I mean, that was a Matt Stafford that, you know, when he first came to league that you thought you were going to see on a continual basis. To me, that is the difference maker in this game. He wasn't a game manager. He actually won the game. Nice, nice. Farouk? Yeah, um – you guys still haven't came around on Calvin Johnson, huh? You guys still think back up, he's all Back that? up, back up, Calvin back Johnson up. Calvin Johnson has been getting shut down back this year. Up. <laughs> shut back up. Shut down. It hasn't back been up. the best season. Shut down. Back up. What was the, who was the fellow from Seattle who said that he's Optimus Prime? Which, don't get me wrong, I like Transformers, and I actually like Optimus Prime. I'm like, nobody's Optimus Prime. Shut up. <laughs> he was trying to, like, kind of pick at Calvin Johnson. I think it was one of their corners. Yeah, I'm it was like, one of the corners, yeah. Oh, the guy who went, Optimus went Prime will be in the Tom building Brady. is what he tweeted. Really? Bumblebee? Anyways, I'm just saying. I'm just, and I'm just saying, too, that you, you're going you're gonna to come around. You're right, though. You're I have to admit it. Calvin Johnson has around. not been efficient this season. I, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I have to acknowledge that. He has not. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, you got anything? Nah. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> I like that, Ty. She just said, get, move on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's up? No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Atlanta, 30. Philadelphia, 17. <sighs> We we always talking about the Dirty Birds, but they're doing their thing. Matt Ryan, 22 for 29, 262 yards, three touchdowns. Julio Jones, 123 yards with one touchdown. Michael Vick, okay game, 21 for 35, 177 yards, one touchdown. LaShawn McCoy, 45 rushing with a one, one touchdown and uh, 22 receiving and one touchdown. Now, Atlanta, Farouk, is 7-0. and I'm going to ask you again, do you believe in the Dirty Birds? I believe that they won't do this in the playoffs. I do believe that. I okay. believe in that, that they will not win a playoff game. Yes, I believe that. Is that what you were asking me? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. yeah. They're not good. But Philly's not good either. And Wait, you know, they, when they put this whole they're thing. they're not good? Philly is not good. That is, no, this no year, Philly, not or good. Philly or Atlanta? Cause Atlanta is good, but, oh, but do it in the but playoffs. But you said Atlanta. But okay. look at Philadelphia. They put this whole thing that they did together last year, and Vince Young called them a dream team. Yeah, they're not the dream team. Not but even close. A lot of people have not big expectations. REM, not even REM sleep. No. <laughs> no. They have big expectations for this team this year, too. And they are the most schizo team next. Them or Detroit is a toss up for who's like the most off balance team right now in the NFL. I think the biggest thing, you know, I'm, a, I'm an Eagles quasi fan. I, there's whatever. Um, (laughs) I think it's time for them to realistically get a new coach in place. It's 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 seriously, it's it's coming, coming. but we, but we say this every year. Oh, it's time. Oh, it's time. This is for real. This year. Yeah. Well, I hope so because I can't really think of what. But if you have a new coach, you're going to have a new QB. I was going to say, why stop at the coach? It's going to happen. I'm not stopping. I'm just, I'm starting. This is where they need to start. Yeah. Yeah. It's time. Keep Reed, 
You're a very likable guy. I'm sorry about all the hardships that you've been through. However, it is time kick, for you to rocks. maybe coach high school football. Maybe it's high school. Maybe <laughs> he'll get it. No, he'll Phil get another, another game. Pennsylvania has great high school teams. They do. They end up in <laughs> Ohio and Michigan, and they used to go to Penn State, but not. Go coach the st- I was going to say so. go coach the state college out there. No, that coach is <laughs> that coach isn't going anywhere for like five years. So right. no. Okay, Maya. I, I'm going to have to respect what Atlanta is doing. They're seven and zero. I think their schedule has been decent. They've played some decent teams. I do agree with Farouk. I think this is more regular season magic than it is going to be um, a playoff shoe. And, like, I don't equate Super Bowl even with this type of performance. Um, Matt Ryan is a good quarterback. I I don't feel that he's more than a game manager, per se. He does have talent. You know, you've got the Julio Jones. You know, you you got Tony Gonzalez. I mean, he's got weapons, and he's using them efficiently. But I say I need for them to come up a good uh, against a good, formidable defense. And once they play a good defense, and I'm not saying that, you know, everybody hasn't been that great, but this game today was just an awful game. And, and the Eagles are in disarray to begin with as a team. Everything about them is just not working. So am I surprised they won the game? No, I'm not. Philadelphia actually comes back off of buys and always win. So this is the first time they actually lost coming off a of buy in a very long time. But this didn't look good today. All right, next game. It's going out to the Big D. New York Giants 29, Dallas 24. Eli Manning, 15 for 29, 192 yards. Had an interception. Mar Bradshaw ran for 78 yards. Tony Romo, listen to this, 36 for 62, 437 (laughs) yards, one touchdown, four Four interceptions. interceptions. Jason Witten got down to 167 yards. Now, Maya, you always say this. Good teams capitalize off off turnovers. You cannot give the Giants the ball in a turnover. They're going to get three or seven. That's the bottom line. And then those first two he got in the first quarter, mm-hmm. um, they had their first possession. The Giants said they got three. And then the, 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 the Cowboys got back on the field. They turned the ball over. The Giants only got three. They came back on the field again. They turned the ball over. Then the Giants got seven. So you cannot turn the ball over to good teams, period, point blank. But what was interesting is during this um, love fest that Troy Aikman was having. <laughs> uh, it was disgusting. He made a comment, and I would love to know what people think about this that he was reading something that said that Tony Romo was the most overrated quarterback in the NFL. He's like, I don't know how that can possibly be true because he was, you know, he was an undrafted quarterback and is, he's a Pro Bowl QB. So that dictates that you're not overrated. <laughs> if you can't perform on the field and you choke at playoff time, the key things, I, I think he is a bit overrated. And I'll be honest, um, what the, what they just took away from him the ability to do audibles at the line because they felt it was too disruptive to the team. For him, and that, it, wasn't like, it wasn't like he was doing a bunch of audibles, just a couple, and Jerry Jones sent down the hammer and said, we're going to cut that out because I think that's part of the reason we're having penalties and issues. No more audibles at the line. You are not Peyton Manning. One <laughs> of the reasons why a lot of people constantly pick Dallas to go to the Super Bowl is because of Tony Romo. You know? Okay, but so, that's based on but what? No, but no, I'm adding to your point of what you were saying about him being overrated. It's but, based on nothing. But I'm like, it's based I don't, on absolutely I don't nothing. ever pick, do you, Ty, do you pick Dallas to ever be in the Super Bowl? Like, no, I never do. But I think it's also going into this perception, and I, I think we should take a vote. Like, when we go to the polls next Tuesday, I think <laughs> there should also be something on the ballot that says, who is your American team? Because I am so over the Cowboys being the American team. And I think that there may be some people out there that may still believe that, even though the Cowboys haven't been a good team. And <laughs> I don't, I mean... Realist, I, I've never picked the Cowboys, and it's not just because I'm right. not a Cowboys fan. It's because you look at the inconsistencies of a Tony Romo and say, why would I expect them to make it any right. to, to tomorrow? Like, I don't. <laughs> I don't think it's collectively just Tony Romo. I don't think that Jason Garrett is also a good fit head coach with what he has. I, I think, I think a lot of it also has to do with, you know, and, and you can't say to an owner, shut up. I know. But Jerry Jones, you you hire people for a reason. Mm-hmm. Right. Sit in your cushy box and shut your mouth. He can't like, but he wants to spend his money the way he wants to spend it. I understand I, that. I respect but, that. But at the same time, is you have to give a coach, a GM, mm-hmm. you have to give those people the, the room right, and leeway it. to do what you're paying them to do. Otherwise, they're puppets, which is essentially what they are. Here's a little something. You were saying about Andy Reid might, get, might be getting fired. Jason Garrett. Might get the boot too. Andy Reid down to Dallas. You always loved him in in division. <laughs> I don't know. You never know. Listen, what he is going. That he is going to get another NFL job. I'm not he saying he's not, but I don't know if I, I don't better, know if the Cowboys. I have a better scenario. Let's just send Lovey down to Dallas. 
because he's from Texas. Let's let him go down there. Let's do it. No, we're holding you're, on to your hate. You're the lovey it's, hater. It's just so, <laughs> we ha- we so actually, deep, Maya. I, I want to read this off of Twitter real quick. <laughs> it's um, so deep. This is from uh, at Docaster 3. A lot of personnel in, has changed in Dallas, and Romo is asked to do too much with the current team, and he is not that dude. So that's kind of like. Well, if he's not that dude, then please go get that dude. Yeah, because I mean, whoever that he does have, is, he right. does have some talent in regards to oh, he receivers. definitely does. I mean, he has, you know, Austin Miles. He's got Jason Witten. He's got, Des he's Bryant. got Des Bryant. He has some tools. So that's not to me a good enough excuse. My thing is, if you take a different quarterback like Peyton Manning and you put him on Dallas, mm-hmm. all of a sudden they're probably winning games. So I, I disagree with that. Okay. Next game. Uh, let's go down to. Mm, let's go to Green Bay. Green Bay 24, Jacksonville 15. This is a close game, look closer than it should have been. Aaron Rodgers, 22 for 35, 186 yards, two touchdowns. Randall Cobb did his team, did his thing, 28 yards, he got a touchdown. Blaine Gabbert, 27 for 49, 303 yards and a touchdown. Cecil Short, that's well, who named the kid? Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> Cecil by the Cecil. Cecil, Cecil Short. Yeah, 116 <laughs> yards. Now, <laughs> Packers had a lot of people. A lot of players out in this game, but they were still able to hold on and win this game. So this is a – I won't say it's like a big win for Green Bay, but through what they had to go through, it's a big game. Okay, I think hold they, on. Think about what's that. that. Hold on. By the way, Jacksonville is 1-5. One 1-5. Five. One five. Five. Right. Yeah. 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 I think a lot of it was the same thing with the Bears being not focused on Carolina. I mean, Jones Drew was on crutches yeah. for Jacksonville. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they didn't have their full allotment of talent. I think Green Bay – and they didn't have great Jennings, like you said, a lot of injuries. But I think they were looking over there like – Jacksonville is awful, so they didn't take them seriously. I, it happens. Teams don't focus. I mean, this is a clear case of that. It's the else with the Bears game today. Maya? You know, it's, this is just unfortunately a very bipolar season in football. Mm-hmm. One week teams look great. The next week they play teams that, you like, like you're saying, are not that good and they're struggling to win. Because last week Aaron Rodgers was, you know, Aaron Rodgers is back and it's blah. Discount double check. Right. Everybody was discount <laughs> double checking. You know, Greg Jennings commercials and, you know, come on. So that's why I'll Dougie. You know, it's just <laughs> everything about this season is so unpredictable, even with good quarterbacks. So, once again, you would expect a better performance, but I'll go with you, Farouk. A win is a win is a win. So, either way, they won the game. Whether it was ugly or not, it is what it is. Next game, uh, let's go ahead and shoot down to uh, – how about Miami? Didn't see this one coming. Miami 30, New York Jets 9. I think this, you know, Mark Sanchez is over. 28 for 54, 283 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Matt Moore had to come in because uh, Ryan Tannehill had a leg injury. He went 11 for 19, 131 yards and one touchdown. And Reggie Bush, uh, 59 yards. But it was a lot of hatred, a lot of hate between in this game. Cause is back that and what forth, you were saying you didn't see coming? Or you didn't think the I didn't score no would I didn't see Miami thirty the Jets nine but I didn't see that but, coming but you saw Miami winning right I did see Miami winning <laughs> just, just it was a day. toss up I was like it, this game could go either way right. toss a toy whoever it, it could have gone either way to me but this gets back to the Jets are one of those organizations that are also in disarray so you're talking about coaches who jobs are on the chopping block what about Ryan I mean this team. It's just so in disarray. They argue, they fight, they don't play well. They're, they're dueling two quarterbacks. I mean, everything about what they do is not right. I know. It's, and it's perfect <laughs> timing because baseball will be Dude, over. I, you know what? I, I turn, I'm just, <laughs> I've bring actually. Bring the basketball in. I have enjoyed <laughs> the World dance. Series. I really have. Do I've dance. enjoyed the whole, this whole playoff. I know the White Sox weren't in it, but. And you know something I really wanted to talk about, and if we have time at the end, we will. I want to have a conversation about Kenny Williams' tenure as GM because the thing some people are saying absolutely blows me away. But maybe we can get to that with our next guest coming up in the next um, segment. Yeah, so maybe we can kind of throw that in there because, I, 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 mind you, nothing tie against you, it's, it's Cub fans that are doing the bashing. And I was like, <laughs> I don't think you got no room to talk, and you really shouldn't have a big stick swinging to nobody. But <laughs> because they're like, oh, he sucks, and he did nothing, and just saying really backward stuff. And one of the questions that I had on Facebook, and if people want to kind of chime into this, what's more important to you, your team making it to the playoffs every single year but never making it to the World Series or winning that World Series? Now, I'm, I know for sure for White Sox fans, it, it, it kind of subdued our appetite for a while, but now we're hungry again. Mm-hmm. So, but someone said, no, making the playoffs is, is far more important. But isn't the goal of a season to, to win, win the World Series? You play like, to win. Mediocrity <laughs> is such a dangerous thing. What's your thoughts on that? 773-591-1690. We can you know, plug it in at the end, but I just – that bothered me when people say it's about making the playoffs every season. All right, now, Anita, I want to ask you something. Like, with um, 
celebrities. I don't know, like I said, how many athletes you've interviewed before. But um, do they, their mates, do they kind of pick and choose them by the rate of success that they have? Do it matter, like, say, um, a B, no, listen to my question. Like, say, a B-list actor, somebody, uh, anybody on the B-list besides, like. uh, Are you asking if they have just as many groupies as Denzel? No, 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 no. I'm asking (laughs) if. Say a guy like Delonte West, oh, you know, God. he's not a great player, but he's always in the news and people know who he is. Does he have the same rate of success with yeah. finding women as yeah. a guy like Dr. Are you Trubisky insane? on his team? Are you insane? Absolutely. Are, some I don't of, know. That's why Some I'm of the most unsuccessful and unattractive oh, athletes yeah. on the planet uh-huh. have women banging on their doors when it's, they go to it's, hotels. It's about you. So, you're attached to being remotely famous, you have a little bit of dough. A little bit of, what it is. Little bit of money. Um, yeah. And once you really get into it, they friends get and knock the off. They, and you the season, right. go that. get a job I mean, and make and more money. And the seasoned groupies <laughs> will get the B-list to get tell, to the A-list. Let me tell you a story. Oh, about, Stepping Stone. Let me tell you a story about groupies. <laughs> <laughs> My best friend paid for the Patriots when he came out of college. He was mm-hmm. a running back. Mm-hmm. And... A lot of us would like, you know, my Iowa click. We're very close. We would go up to games and stuff. And I remember this one time I went to a game to play Miami. And uh, <laughs> this probably made me look bad, but in hindsight, I didn't think about it. We went out. It was like me and a bunch of Patriot players. And we're like in the VIP. And I'm just having a good time. Like, hey, you know, whatever. And I go down to the bathroom, right? And as I come out, this girl. Now, wow. I'm by the wall washing my hands. Like, that's what the sink was. And there was a dryer. And I thought maybe she was about to reach by me, like, to use a dryer. She pinned me up against the wall and was like, I want you to take me back with you in that VIP area. And I was like, and I need you to step back. Because <laughs> you're, I mean, she was like, when I say she was in my personal space, she's like, mm-hmm. you're the only chick up there. Why can't you take me back? I'm like, look, you have to be chosen. Mm-hmm. I said, I can't. <laughs> I'm like, I can't just randomly take you up there. I was like, I'm only up there because I know somebody I'm cool with. I said, but, you know, go do what other women do. Well, but at least she asked No, you that's how she asked her. me was wrong. No, she but been, I'm saying I've been in situations. She pinned me up against the wall. But I've been in situations where I've been out with friends that are professional athletes and have been... It, I've never been the only female, but there might have only been one other one and have been in situations where I stepped outside of wherever it was that we were. And I've had drinks spilled on me. I've had my hair pulled. I've been kicked. It's bad. Wow. It is. And I'm like, and so I've told girls in the club, hey, 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 let me, let me, hey, tell, let me hey, tell you something. Hey. If you want to meet him, I will introduce you. But if you kick me <laughs> but it's, one more time. It's being, being a groupie <laughs> is a profession because yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm about to start to sound bad. Yeah. I had another friend. <laughs> <laughs> Her name was Ima. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm starting to sound bad now, but I said it wasn't even like that. That played for he played basketball, and whenever he would come locally, um, we, our little Iowa clique was very close. We would go to different games. Was this AC Earl? Interesting. <laughs> so we uh, would go to different games, and uh, I would often see the same women, like maybe I saw in Indianapolis, in Detroit, uh-huh. and, I, and all it was interesting mm-hmm. that they would be like they were following them. So one day I asked, I'm like, is that person dating somebody on the team? He's like, nah, she's just always around. I was like, so is somebody buying a ticket yes. just yes. to be just to be there? Because the return on the investment is far greater. So they think. But see, it's not oh, because wow. look at all the issues with these women who have had, you know, children by these athletes That's that said, eventually so go think. broke mm-hmm. and then they're trying to get money. It's like, dude, those and dividends can only be split kids. so many That's ways. Right. That's right. You know, well, so it's it's and interesting. God forbid you get a get one that doesn't pay Uncle Sam, then, you Right, because Uncle Sam going to get paid first. Oh, he's going to get his money <laughs> first. Welcome back to Stats and Stilettos. Find us on Facebook and like our fan page. Welcome back to Stats and Stilettos. It is now time for everyone's favorite segment, <laughs> Sports Chick Tip of the Week. Ladies, it's time for the Sports Chick, Sports Chick, Sports Chick Tip of the Week. All right, ladies, this week's tip is going to be in conjunction with Halloween. The NBA season starts Wednesday. Halloween, Wednesday. Guess who probably won't be your date at the costume party? Your significant other. Basketball season starts on the same day as Halloween. Do not start this argument. You will lose. (laughs) He is not going to put on that costume that matches your costume. So if you have plans on being Cleopatra, Mark Anthony, you're just going to be Cleopatra. And you will have no Mark Anthony because he will be watching the NBA. That's this week's tip. Don't start any fights on Wednesday. Just enjoy your Halloween and your costume and keep it moving. 
at least baseball's ending. <laughs> 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 right. But I think that's really that's really the key here. Is you have to realize that the sports seasons were pretty much made to overlap. Absolutely. Baseball is ending. We're halfway through NFL. College football will be over next month as far as regular season is concerned. NBA starts on Wednesday. This is just the cycle. Just get used to it. Speaking yeah. of, wait a minute, racial slurs. What about Stephen A. Smith doing the beep, beep, please on ESPN on first take? You don't. You didn't hear about this? He dropped the N word on ESPN first take. What? Say what? Really? What you didn't hear about wow. like on f- maybe like what day was it? Maybe like Tuesday or something. Um, I really? forgot. Yes, and they Is were he like, still on the air? "Yes, ESPN did not suspend him." Wow. Um, and everyone's like, "How is this okay?" Because if Skip Bayless, <laughs> well, they would have to like you know. Stephen A. Smith said it. Because Stephen A. Smith, they said someone's like, well, "Why is that fair?" I, thought, I was reading the post, and they were like, well, "Why is it fair that black people can say that?" To Who each did other? he say it to? There was another. Because if he said he, it to Skip Bayless, that that's why it's okay. No, but there was <laughs> no because Skip Bayless draws no, that kind no, of thing. There was out actually of here. another person on the show with him, an athlete. Who was it? Oh my gosh. I'm trying to blame this, this made it through the um, dump and everything. Oh, dump I bump. know who it was. It was Marshall. It was uh, Brandon Marshall. No, it was not. But no, th- th- this made yeah, it through it the dump. This didn't get because dumped. Because he this took ma- over the show. <laughs> this made it onto the air, though, is what Google you're it. saying. It made it onto the air. Well, no, I guess it was it was beeped, but you knew what he said. Mm. It so, wasn't Brandon Marshall? Because no, he was I, on I'm the show Google the this. other day, and I'm he took over the show. And they were like, "Yeah, I heard that he didn't have flattering stuff to say about either one of them when he was on. I mean, I didn't see it. I don't really watch the show, honestly. But I was just, you know. Well, I don't either because it comes on when I technically. But should everyone be at work. was saying, <laughs> why is it okay for him to be able to use this and not be reprimanded for it? Because ESPN has opted to not take him off of the radio um, or TV for saying it. It had something to do with okay, they were talking about uh, Kobe Bryant and some other stuff missing, and." There was a guest on the show who was, who is this guy? I have his picture, but not his name. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. This is great radio right here. (laughs) I thought it was Brandon Marshall, (laughs) but I was wrong. (laughs) He's like another commentator, like, you know, a newspaper guy. Oh, he's a commentator. Who is is this guy? Oh, I've never seen him before. I've never seen him before either. (laughs) But it was was another black guy that was talking with him about Kobe Bryant and, Mm -hmm. you know, him missing games. And he was like. Jigga, please, you know, <laughs> Jigga. Wow. I, said, I said Jigga. Wow. <laughs> and uh, everyone's like, they can't believe that one ESPN has not suspended him or taken him off the air. And why is it okay for him to be able to use the N-word when nobody else can do it? What's your thoughts on that? I mean, wh- how do you feel about him saying <sighs> that? What's your thoughts? I know we're wrapping up. If, if, if you want to get one I mean, I, under, in. I understand that people are sensitive to the word. However, it's, I mean, we, certain people can say it and certain people can't. Should you be saying it on national television? Probably not. Do they say it on national television? Yes. But in that type of context, in that type of setting, that's supposed to be somewhat of a professional environment. It is. But at the same time, you're also talking about somebody that makes a living yelling at people. So perhaps it was his emotions taking over for a second. Now, he did come on. It's demands. He did come on. And say in the next show, he said, "Let me speak very slow and clearly, so he people said it. can." I heard it. He said it. But it, it was he was saying that he didn't say it. I tried to you know, uh, listen to it, but I couldn't. I didn't make it out. He said it. I, 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 I watched <laughs> the video. Maybe I'll, I'll post the video to our, our our Facebook page. People okay. can listen and see what they think. He said it. It was it was a slip, just like you remember when uh on Monday Night Football when Jaworski <laughs> made the slip and, and used profanity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he said it. I mean, I'm sure he probably says it frequently. That's why he just slipped out so naturally. But people's issue is that he's not being reprimanded. And the guy he was talking to was a black guy um, whose name, for some reason, in this Oh, well, stage, they don't care if it's us saying it to each other. Well, I don't understand what exactly do they want <laughs> to happen. <laughs> it's, it's a I think they suspend wanted, him for a show. I think they want a suspension, you know, and probably a public apology. But that means he's going to have to acknowledge that he really said it. Right, of which apparently he is not. So I can't believe he's still. I mean, unless there is an outcry of African Americans writing into ESPN saying we are so offended that Stephen A. Smith said this to another black man on television, we want him off. What's really? Yeah, I mean that's a great point though. (laughs) If that doesn't happen, you know, it's going to die out within the next couple of days. If it hasn't already, it's dead right now. Yeah, I just killed it. I don't know. Who this guy is? I'm like, you know, they don't have his name or anything. But I guess he kind of took offense to it a little bit. Oh, he took offense. That's to when it? the conversation kind of was evolved. he a, was he from Boston? 
I think he's from. The, it was talking about L.A. So I think it was. You know, he's from Detroit. Probably. He's from Detroit. 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 <laughs> no, because they say it right now on the radio. <laughs> Their newscasters say it. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, interesting enough. I mean, I don't. News. You're right. Like I don't know. It's. <laughs> People make mistakes. Obviously, he knows that's not appropriate to say on TV. So he's just saying, like, I got Tourette's. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> he just. Well, if he's not going to admit that he said it, then I don't feel like. Yeah, he's not. He's like, you miss, he's like, I was talking fast and I made a, like a, I meshed the word together. So I really didn't say it. So he's saying that it just, you know, it sounded like he said it, but he didn't say it altogether. Thank you to Kyle Inman for joining us, talking some NBA. And thank you to Mia Jackson joining us from SidelinePass.com to talk some MLB. Check us out next week, everybody.